in. What are you doing here? What's it look like? Well, who let you in? I let myself in. Sharon sent me the keys in the cab this morning. Hold on, where is she? Oh, I'd say by now, somewhere over the Atlantic. She phoned me from the airport. The airport? Yeah, she's gone to see Angie. And in the meantime, she's left me to run this place. So do us both a favour and stay the hell out of my way. Told you. Well, she knew you'd tell me anyway sooner or later. No, I wouldn't. Hey? Secret, wouldn't it? Oh, it's got nothing to do with me. She pretend she's going out of Prince Charles for all I care. Still, it's nice that my mum and Pat and Matt got on, isn't it? Mm. Well, we just have to keep it going, that's all. Are you listening to me or what? Of course I am. Well, what did you say? That we had to keep it going and keep trying. Exactly. Are you going to get up today or what? Yeah, in a minute. You've been saying that for half hour. You always come back in and keep me company. Just put my makeup on. So? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here. Oh. Do you want some breakfast? No, no, this is great. Yeah. Hey, don't go. Come, come and sit with me for a bit. I really enjoyed last night. You don't regret it, do you? No. I've been living on my own for a year, Sanjay. What do you think? No, I've missed you too. I'd forgotten how good it was. No, I hadn't. I think that was the trouble. Oh, where's Shamila? She's watching a video. I'll go and get her, right? Eh? Nah, she's happy where she is. Oh, come on, she used to get in bed with us in the morning. Do you remember? No, Sanjay. I don't want to confuse her. What? Are you being here? I don't want her thinking that you live here again. What happens when she comes in tomorrow morning to find that you're not here? You, you mean you expect me to go again? Of course. <sighs> so what was last night all about then? Sex. Nothing else? No. I wanted sex and you happened to be here. And now you want me to go? Oh, not right away. You can finish your tea first. Morning. Where have you been? Catching the worm. What? Early bird. Is this a conversation going to start making sense? And then I just go back to my bed? Well, I didn't say anything last night because I wanted to check it out first. But I spoke to Dr. Legg yesterday. He told me there was a job coming. You got a job? Not for me, for you. Me? Yeah, at a community centre. Now, the closing date was finishing on the 23rd, but I've just been around to see the bloke. He said he'll still see you. No, wait. Slow down a minute. You went to see someone about a job for me. Yeah. Doing what? The nursery. It's what you're doing, it. Well, yeah, but... Don't you think you should have talked to me first? Well, that's why I didn't say anything until I checked it out. I don't want you to build your hopes up. I don't believe you. We need a job, don't you? Yeah, I do, well, stop but... complaining. Your interview's on Thursday. Not disturbing you, am I? Not in the least. I need some crates bringing up. Well, I'm very happy for you. Take it that means you're not going to help me. You want to run this place? Be my guest. All right, I'll get Steve to help. You do that. I also need some money for a float. My heart bleeds for you. All right, I'll manage. Wait a minute. I'll bring it down for you. Bye, sweetheart. See you tomorrow, yeah? Right, I'll be uh, off then. Okay. Yeah, I have to say, I was hoping yeah, that I we could... It's called counting your chickens before they're hatched. So that's it, then? It was just a one-off. I didn't say that. I really enjoyed last night, Sanjay. And if I want some more, I'll call you. Bye. Yeah, bye. I did say it was a waste of time opening up. I mean, in their right mind is going to buy a car on Boxing Day. Oh, well, the shops are open. Yes, for the sales. There's still people out there spending money, though, isn't it? But not here. Oh, it's early yet. What are you expecting? A last minute rush or something? Mum, if you do nothing, you get nothing. At least I'm having a go. I oh, know, I just wish you'd listen to me sometimes. I spent a lot of time with Frank. I did learn something. Yeah, but Frank went bust, didn't he? I don't intend to. He was still good at what he did. So am I. 
I think it's a waste of time both of us being here. Why don't you? You, you go up and we'll swap over lunchtime. No, I'll tell you what, Mum. Uh, if you can hang on here for a bit, there's a couple of people I want to go and see. What people? I just want to see if I can drum up some business, though. How? Well, there's this guy over an actor, right, who I was talking to, and he said he's got a similar setup to us. And he reckons if we swap over the motors now and again, we can keep the forecourt looking different. You never give up, do you? No, I don't, which is why I'm going to make us both very rich one day. Oh, get out of here, David. Mm. I'll see you later, yeah? I'll be back before you can say turkey dripping. All you need to know is that I'll be in charge for a while. But well, when's she coming back? I don't know. Does Grant know about all this? Yep. And? Not a lot you can do, is there? We still get paid in that, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. It... Probably have to work a little bit harder. I'll be here as often as I can, but the rest of the time we just have to sort it out amongst ourselves. Well, if Sharon's not here, the shift rotor's up to Swanee. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll get together later and sort out a new one, yeah? Uh, What's that? Your float. Yeah, it's empty. Looks like your friend cleared us out before she left. Still, being the new manager, I'm sure you'll be able to think of something. We'll just have to manage without one. Right. The float's the easy bit. I want to see what you're going to do when the bills start coming in. Well, of course I'm upset. Oh, it's his oh, birthday and you're stuck in here. Oh, I've got to do it. We open up again tomorrow. Well, what about Jason? Why can't he do it? Well, he's not coming in till tomorrow, is he? Oh, yeah? Home with the family, is he? See, he don't be like that. I'm only going to be here until 12 o'clock. I mean, we do something with Stephen then, can't we? I know you have to work, but it is his birthday. I've already asked Gates to look after twins so we can do something together. I'll just be a couple of hours. Everything's always a couple of hours, isn't it? Or, or in a minute, or this time next year. I just want you to put us first, you know, for once. What is the point in of working really hard and we don't have any kind of life together? The twins are one now and we haven't even taken them on holiday or anything. We'll go away next summer, I promise you. Oh, Natalie, thanks for coming in. Oh, it's all right. I was bored to see us at home anyway. Well, we're not too busy anyway. I'll only be a couple of hours. Oh, take as long as you like. Right, well, I'll just finish his breakfast and I'll be off, all right? Right. All right. All right. Uh, where's Jen car? Oh, I'm doing her makeup. Oh, all right. What did you have? Um, full breakfast. All right. Uh, listen, what I told you yesterday. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, I feel really silly. Well, don't. We've done the same. Hey? Okay. We're having to watch us slobbering over each other. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Cheers. Besides, I don't like the sound of that Derek bloke. Yeah. Oh, he just doesn't think so, he's going to not going to change him, love. Been like that ever since I've known him. Yeah. I mean, I know he has to work hard. It's just the way he puts business first and everything else last. I had the same with Frank. Look where that got him. So have you sorted anything out? No, not yet. I don't suppose we will either. We've had the same conversation a hundred times. Nothing's changed, not yet. You see, the trouble is, it, it makes me feel like I'm nagging all the time, and I'm not. He just doesn't seem to realise how important it is. No, no. I mean, what's wrong with wanting a normal life like everyone else? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, you'll have to excuse me. Duty calls. Oh, yeah, all right. Well, I'll see you later, yeah? I'll pop round with Stephen's present, all right? OK. Come on, Stephen, come on. Ciao, darling, see you later. Morning. Morning. Uh, it's open if you want to have a look inside. Thank you. There you go. Mm. It's a lovely car, isn't it? Mm. Been looking for one for a while. One I can afford, anyway. Yeah, sounds like anything in life to get what you pay for. Mm. Many owners? Uh, two, according to the logbook. Mm. Any collisions? No, not that we know of. And of course, all our cars are checked by our own mechanic before they come on the forecourt. Mm. Think you might be interested? Mm, possibly. For the right price. Oh, of course, yeah. Any chance of a test drive? See what she can do. be really pleased to see you. 
I thought you might have changed your mind and come round yesterday. Well, I wanted to be with the children. It's for them, really, isn't it? They're all evening, were you? Mostly, yeah. How's the patient? Well, had a bit of a rough night, but he's OK now. Come on through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it a bad time? No, of course not. Oh, take notice of this lot. They've got no homes to go to. Come to give them a blanket, Bob, have you, sweetheart? <laughs> take a notice. You'd better warm your hands first. <laughs> <laughs> all right, leave it out, will you? Come on, you lot, out. They want some time on their own. Oh, it's all right. We don't mind watching. <laughs> Here, Phil. If she's brought a nurse's uniform, give us a peek before we go, eh? Hey? <laughs> Sorry for that. All right. Have I had worse? Oh, thanks for your present. It was great. I've got yours here. Uh, Mum got it for me. <laughs> Oh, vouchers. Yeah, well, I thought you could choose what you wanted. I will. Thanks. Uh, your mum said you had a rough night. Oh, I just didn't sleep too well, that's all. Oh, you look fine now. Yeah, well, the uh, lads cheered me up a bit. Good. How'd you get on the pool, Ace? All right. That good, was it? Oh, it was lovely, really. We let the Sally Army around the afternoon singing carols in the square. Well, we had a right house full here. You would have loved it. So you had a nice time, then? Brilliant, yeah. Well, it would have been better if you'd have been here, of course. Well, sounds like you managed. Well, Mum's been great. Yeah, I'm sure. I missed you. Have you? Yeah. I was going to ring you, but like I said, we had asked oh, for you. Sorry. I've just made a pot of tea, Cathy. Do you fancy one? Oh, please, yeah. What about you, darling? Do you want another beer? Oh, no, thanks. I'm all right. Oh, you're better then. Yeah, well, better than I was. Um, I still get a bit dizzy now and again, but. How about you? I'm OK. Good. How's it going at the cafe? Fine. Cafe, for some. Here we are, then. Should have a bit of peace now. I've sent them all up the pub. Let's have a nice little chat, eh? Just the three of us. It's got electric windows and central locking. It handles nicely. Is that right? Is it? No, no. Just needs to top up with water. I'll see if that one get back. I don't believe it. I don't understand it. I do. The engine's gone. No, I can't, now. Well, thanks for the test drive, but I don't think it's what I'm looking for. Oh, no, no, don't worry. I'll get somebody else. Good idea. Might I suggest a scrap metal dealer? I won't charge you for the cab fare back. I can see you've got enough on your plate already. So when did she leave? Sometime yesterday. She stayed in a hotel last night, got a flight out first thing this morning. But that's not all. She cleared out all the takers before she went. Oh, I bet Grant loved that. To tell you the truth, I don't think he's that bothered. He's been walking around like a zombie all day. He must have been some Rui. Really. Yeah, well, I've been known to exchange the odd word or two. Anyway. She rang Michelle from the airport, asked her to look after this place. Sent the keys round in the cab. I didn't say when she'd be back. The trouble is they're not logical. That means you never know what they're going to do next. My well, dad used to say they had one brain for the whole species, and they had to take it in turns to use no, it. No, 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 they're clever enough, but they just don't make sense. I mean, what it comes to... Ricky! Up... Pat. Huh? On the phone. He's just coming. Oh, bless him. He usually has a nap about this time. Uh, it's time I was going anyway. Oh, you don't have to go, do you? Yeah, I've got to get back to the cab. I said I'd only be an hour. Oh, we'll be really upset when he wakes up to find you've gone. Well, I'll try and get back again tomorrow. A bit earlier, maybe. Well, I'll tell him then, shall I? To expect you. Oh, no, don't. Just in case I can't. I'll phone before I leave. Oh, you will try, though, won't you? Yeah, I'll try. Karen, will you be going to the Queen Vic when you get back? Well, I could do. Well, tell Grant to get his backside over here, will you? I must have phoned a dozen times. Yeah, well, I'll tell him. See you tomorrow, then? Well, I'll try. Let's go, girl. So what is telling? I don't know, really. Just sort of came out. It's been really good about it, though. What do you mean? Oh, thought we'd take the mickey and all that. Yeah, well, he's good like that. Probably because he's a bit older. I never thought that. And it's all right sometimes, but other times he can be a right boring old git. Well, I think he's all right.
Well, you're starting to realise I've got good taste in blows. I won't go that far. I mean, you have had some dipsticks in the past. Like who? Paul Simmons. He wasn't bad. He had the IQ of a frog. Oh, he's gorgeous, though, wasn't he? Yeah, if you like that sort of thing. You're just jealous now, because I saw him first. Hardly. Anyway, I think we should get off the subject of your ex-boyfriends, or this will be here all day. No, oh, very funny. Then why don't you do something useful and make me a cup of tea, eh? I've been so embarrassed in my old life. Oh, you could try and tell him. It's a lot of money for one car, especially one that don't go. How many wrecks has he bought now? Let me wait till he gets back. Well, look, I've only had a quick look at it, but I mean, if you ask me, it was bodged up just to move it on. Bodged up? Yeah, I'm surprised you got as far as you did. You mean whoever sold him that knew that was going to happen? Oh, there's no way they could have. Right, when he shows his face, you tell him I want to see him. Pronto! I've got a feeling that in the next few weeks, this won't be the happiest place to work in. I think you may be right. What are we going to do? As much we can do, is there? Well, him and Michelle are hardly bosom pals, are they? No. Which means we're bound to be stuck in the middle. Probably. So who do we listen to? Whoever shouts loudest. Oh, great help you are. So, this job, if you get it. If I get it. That means you can stick around a bit longer, doesn't it? Could it all work too, have you? No. Just saying, that's all. Is that right? Yeah. Well, now you can't be mentioning it. Um, I wouldn't mind staying on a bit longer. Oh? Any particular reason why? Well, it's as good a place as any, I suppose. And that's all? Yeah. What do you have in mind? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering if it was anything to do with meeting some gorgeous son with a sparkling personality and a razor-sharp wit. Well, that sounds like something that you stick around for. So, um, do you know one then? I could ask around for you. Yeah, that'd be great. Grant. Oh, uh, sweetheart, you want a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I was supposed to be over the cafe. Um, I've just been over to see Phil. Oh, yeah? How is he? He's OK. Your mum said she wants to see you. Yeah, I'm going to go over there later. Get out of this place. Oh, right. So, uh, how are you and Phil getting on? All right. Don't lie to me. You should give him an hard time. Well, I think that's between me and him, don't you? Look, you know, none of it was his fault. It was all down to that slut. She hasn't much admitted it. Sharon? Yeah, you know, the horizontal landlady. Anyway, if I can forgive him for what happened, so should you. My life's ruined, no reason why yours should be. You know, she's gone. Got on a flight this morning, went running back to Mummy. It's her anniversary too. I'm sorry. Don't be. I'm not. Aren't you? No, in fact, I've never been happier. Now, why don't I believe that? Believe it. Just do me a favour, eh? What? I lost Sharon because there was no way back. You and Phil still got something. Don't lose it. Yeah, that's right. Call of Albert Square. Yeah, we'll be open. Uh, All right. You're very happy. Yeah, I am. Get aboard. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, that guy I was telling you about. I think he might be up for a little deal. A little deal? Yep. Well, I got to sort out the paper at first light, but uh, it's looking good. Like the little deal you did on the Rover? Oh, man, please don't keep on about that. I told you it's a 24 karat investment, and I guarantee you I will shift it by the end of the month. If you do, you'll have to push it. Hey. I took a customer out for test drive today. What, in the Rover? Oh, yeah, it broke down. You're joking. Wait till I see Mick. It's nothing to do with Mick. The engine blew up. Ricky says it was bodged before he even got here. Yeah, I had to call Ricky to come out and collect me. Look, Mum, Ricky don't know what he's talking about, does he? I'll get someone professional in to have a look at it this time. Someone who knows what they're doing. He just needs a tune-up, I say. Oh, David, you've been conned. No way, Mum. I want you to write down the name and address of the dealer you got that from. What for? So I can go and see him, of course. Mum, I'll do it. I'll do it in the morning. I want the name and address, David. Mum, don't get involved. Don't worry about it. I said I'd deal with it. Stop treating me like an idiot. I've heard it all before, I love, but from experts. Now, either you write down the name and address of that dealer, or I close this place down. You can start looking for another job. Finish with that. Scotch. Philip. 
please. See why Sharon fell for you. Such a lovely man. Well, I'm single now. Maybe me and you should get together. I'd die first. Oh, yeah. I forgot I'm a bit too young for you, aren't I? You prefer dirty old men, don't you? I wonder, does Jeff know he wasn't the first? Maybe I should tell him old Denny Watts beat him to it. Oh, uh, I think I'll go up and have a kip. You sure you won't come and keep me company? Suppose you think you're funny. Well, you were Sharon's best friend, and uh, you've both been able to put it about a bit. Now, uh, I know I haven't got a bus pass, and I've still got all my own teeth, but who knows? You might enjoy it. I should call your bluff. That'd shock you, wouldn't it? What makes you think I'm bluffing? You are thick, aren't you? <laughs> it's OK. I mean, we can always do what Sharon did, you know? Tell everybody it was a mistake afterwards, and uh, when I finish, we could always bring a filler. So what are you doing? Waiting for you. Why? Well, first, there's this. Birthday cake for Steve. And that's supposed to make everything all right, is it? A birthday cake? Look, it was just a last minute fall on the, on the way back from the travel agents. Travel agents? Yeah, um, look, I got the thinking. What's more important, eh? You and the kids, or the chip shop? And? So I phoned up an old mate of mine who um, rents out villas in Gran Canaria. And yeah. we went for a drink, and a drink turned into a holiday. So I then went down to travel agents, booked the flights, and away we go. But we can't, Ian. What about the shop? The kids will soon as start school in a couple of weeks. Look, I'll worry about the shop. The kids, they're coming with us. And it ain't going to do Stephen any harm to miss school for a couple of weeks, is it? We can't go. Yes, we can. Well, just. Look, there was money in the building society left over from when we fitted out the chip shop. And I got a great deal because it's a last minute booking. When? For how long? End of next week. For three weeks. <laughs> do you think you can put up with me for that long? <laughs> is this it? Yep. At least let me come with you. You move from this car, I won't be responsible for my actions. Now, what did you say his name was? Evans, Barry Evans. Right. Mum, please, don't do anything you might regret later, all right? <laughs> no, I'm afraid he's out for the afternoon. OK. Thanks awfully. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mr. Evans. Just a moment. If you'd just like to look through the details, you find everything. Yeah, OK, John. Yeah, it's a deal. Yeah, cheers. Mr. Evans. I'm yes. sorry, Mr. Evans. Yeah, it's all right, I've got your deals on Wheels, Walford. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. It won't be a pleasure, I can assure you. You got any kids? Yeah. Two boys. Me and all. My youngest, Simon, he tries hard, but he doesn't seem to get very far. The other one's that idiot sat in the car outside. Now, Simon, although he gives me the odd sleepless night, he tends not to be too much trouble. The occasional birthday card. Well, the odd begging letter. Nothing I can't cope with. But him... That other one, he's got cat food where his brains used to be. He takes money. My money, and he gives it to people like you. Me? Yeah, con men. I, I don't You quite... can save your flannel for somebody else, love. You see, I've lived with a car dealer. I had to listen to it, day in, day out, for more years than any woman should have to suffer. That one's until he ran off and joined the Foreign Legion. Now, there are those that think that a woman on her own is a soft touch. A lot of people have made that mistake, but only once. You see, my idiot son paid you good money for a car. I took a customer out in that car today. We got three miles and the engine blew up. I'm not... I don't want you to say anything, Mr Evans. You see, this is by way of being like a telegram, a personal message, just so you know what's coming. Either you collect and repair that car free of charge, or refund the money in full, or by this weekend, myself and as many friends as I can muster will be parading up and down outside there, telling everybody that your cars have a life expectancy of three and a half miles. Do I make myself clear? As Crystal. Good. I'll tell you what. I'll give you a day for every mile your car travelled to think about it. I'll make that Friday lunchtime. Pleasure doing business with you.
What are you looking for? Painting book. What for? Sharon said that I had to pay part of the takings in every week to cover the standing orders. Well, give the takings to me and I'll pay them in for you. No. I said give them to me. No, I'm here for Sharon. I'll do what she says. I'm warning you, Michelle. You cross me and I'll crush you. Yeah, yeah, all, all right, Grant. You're bigger than me, you're stronger than me. At the end of the day, I can't stop you doing whatever you want to do. But I ain't Sharon. You see, she loved you. I don't. You can't do to me what you did to her. What I did to her? Yeah. You destroyed her. You systematically tore her apart. It's no wonder she went with somebody else, anybody else. She was a slut. Oh, shut up! She was the sweetest, kindest person someone like you will ever know. She loved you. I mean, the reason that you're sitting there now with so much spite and hate and self-pity is because of what you did. You want someone to blame Grant, eh? Someone to take it out on? Well, forget me. Forget Sharon, even Phil. You don't need to look any further than yourself. BBC One's back in Albert Square at 7.30 tomorrow night. There's comedy coming up next as Bill finds out why grown-ups shouldn't play with computers in 2.4 Children. <laughs>